Good day, and thanks for joining me as we talk about the anti-emetics, the anti-muscarinic and antihistamine agents. Hyoscine, or in the United States, scopolamine, and dimenhydrinate are drugs that act as anti-emetics. These drugs are actually from two completely different drug groups. And they're grouped together because of the fact that they work at the same place along the vomiting pathway. Hyoscine, or sometimes called scopolamine in the United States, is an anticholinergic agent, or sometimes called an anti-muscarinic agent. And dimenhydrinate is a first-generation H1 antihistamine. Both anticholinergic drugs and the first-generation antihistamines are discussed elsewhere, so I'm not going to get into too much more than trying to give you an understanding of their use as antiemetics. As a broad overview, these drugs are best placed in the treatment of nausea and vomiting from motion sickness. And let's take a look at why that is. The vomiting center can be activated either directly by irritants or indirectly following input from four main areas. The first area is the cerebral cortex. Extreme pain or anxiety are examples of the cerebral cortex needing to prompt the vomiting center. And examples of drugs that could decrease inputs from the cerebral cortex includes the uh, benzodiazepines. Another two areas that can send messages to the vomiting center include the vagal nerve from the GIT, for instance, when prompted by damage or damage from toxins, for instance, and the chemoreceptor trigger zone, which is right there next to the vomiting center in the medulla. And both of those areas use serotonin or 5-HT as the neurotransmitter, and both of those areas are affected when a person goes through, for instance, chemotherapy. The H1 antihistamines and anticholinergic agents don't affect those two pathways directly. There have been hypotheses that anticholinergic and antihistamine drugs would be of some benefit in chemotherapy-induced nausea and vomiting because of the fact that the vomiting center itself uses acetylcholine and histamine. However, studies have not shown any significant benefits. The final area that can affect the vomiting center is the vestibular area. An example of a condition that originates in the vestibular area and can cause nausea and vomiting is obviously motion sickness. The neurotransmitters that are involved in that pathway are the histamine 1 and acetylcholine. So one would hypothesize that the best medicines for reducing nausea and vomiting due to motion sickness are indeed the histamine 1 antihistamines and the anticholinergic agents because they affect two portions of that vomiting pathway. The first generation antihistamines are probably more effective in decreasing motion sickness than the anti cholinergic agents because the antihistamines have not only H1 blocking properties in the brain, but they also have inherent anticholinergic properties as well. As I said before, we have taken the antihistamines and the anticholinergic drugs elsewhere. So here I'll just talk about the side effects of short-term use. Problems with the H1 antagonists, or in other words, the dimenhydrinate, include the fact that they decrease arousal, or in other words, they make you tired. And as such, they have to be combined oftentimes with caffeine or some other type of stimulant. 
to compensate for the drowsy feeling that one gets from taking these. The primary side effects of hyoscine or scopolamine, in other words, the anticholinergic drugs, include the symptoms of decreased parasympathetic nervous system activity. In other words, we're decreasing the rest and digest system, allowing the fight or flight response to be prominent. And as you would expect from that, there'd be tachycardia. Um, the pupils would dilate and having dilated pupils, sometimes there's a bit of blurred vision. There'd be a decrease in the gastrointestinal tract and you'd feel that in as a dry mouth and there'd be urinary retention because of the fact that we need to flee, not pee. So those would be the side effects of the anticholinergic drugs like hyoscine or scopolamine. Hyoscine is available in oral, a transdermal, and injected formulations. And just remember that it should be taken about 30 minutes before the intended travel. And now you understand that hyoscine or scopolamine in the United States and dimenhydrinate act as anti-emetic drugs. These drugs are from two completely different classes of drugs, but they work at the same place along the vomiting pathway, so they're effective in reducing nausea and vomiting from pretty much the same causes and along the same pathways. And those pathways include the vestibular area and in the vomiting center itself. In other words, they decrease motion sickness probably better than any anti-emetic and they probably have some effect on just about any kind of nausea and vomiting from other causes because of the fact that they affect the vomiting center itself. The H1 antagonists are probably better at reducing motion sickness than the acetylcholine receptor antagonists because of the fact that the H1 antagonists, including dimenhydrinate, block both the histamine 1 and the acetylcholine. On the short-term use, the main problem with dimenhydrinate is the fact that it does decrease arousal and therefore it's oftentimes combined with caffeine or some other type of stimulant. And now, you know. Thanks for joining me.